Jurassic World's much-anticipated third part will finally hit theaters in less than a year from now. There has been a lot going on around the franchise in recent months. Observant fans have thus been able to find an increasing number of set pictures and other facts about Jurassic World Dominion on the internet. In order to save you the trouble of searching for them yourself, we have summarized everything you need to know about the cast, the plot and the new dinosaurs in this video. As always, we start off with a little recap of the second part of Jurassic World. Therefore, if you haven't seen it, you should skip forward now. Ila Nublar's volcano is about to erupt, causing mankind to deal with the question of whether they bear any responsibility to help out the dinos. Owen Grady, Clear Deering, and the rest come to a decision and set out on a journey to save the creatures. First, they track down the female Velociraptor, Blue, who still shares a bond with Owen. The rescue operation is financially supported by the Lockwood family, which has been involved in the project since the park was founded. It soon turns out that they don't really want to save the dinos, they merely want to capture them and sell them to the highest bidder. Also involved is the Indoraptor, a new crossbreed species whose attacks can be controlled with laser targeting. The dinosaurs are taken to the Lockwoods estate where Owen and Claire attempt to set them free. Among the confusion, the Indoraptor also escapes and now preys on the buyers and the others present. While fleeing from the hunter, they meet Lockwood's granddaughter Macy, who's actually a clone of his young deceased daughter. Blue manages to break free as well, and together with Grady, she takes up the fight against the Indoraptor. In the final battle, the two Two raptors fall through the roof of the building and the super dinosaur is impaled on the fossil skull of a triceratops. But through a hole in a hydrogen cyanide tank, toxic gas is leaking out which is about to kill all the trapped dinosaurs. As a result, the heroes decide to release them into the wild. In the final scene, we get to see a T-Rex and a lion yelling at each other in the zoo. And so ends part 2. But what awaits us in part 3? Aside from Raptor trainer Owen Grady, the tough Claire Deering will, of course, also take on a leading role again. Both will be played as expected by Marvel star Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. Another five other familiar faces from the Jurassic World series will also be back. The nervous system analyst Franklin Webb will support our heroes and their new adventure as previously. Also joining them is his intelligent colleague Dr. Zia Rodriguez. Both had already played a significant role in the second part to save the dinosaurs from their demise just like before. They are embodied by Justice Smith and Daniela Pineda. For both of them, Jurassic World The Fallen Kingdom was their first major role in Hollywood. Isabella Sermon as Macy Lockwood will also be making another appearance. Exactly what kind of role the clone of the late billionaire's daughter will play is sure to be interesting. Above all, it was her beliefs that ultimately were the deciding factor in releasing the dinos into the wild. Yet, it is not only from the second part that the dinosaur friends will get support. Characters from the first movie released in 2014 are also joining in. With Barry Simban, the second raptor trainer from Jurassic World returns to the series, he is played by Omar Sy. He is a good friend of Owen and will presumably join him on the search for the escaped raptor Blue. Actually already announced, but now unfortunately cancelled, is Lowry Crothers. The security technician from Part 1, who is played by New Girl star Jake Johnson, unfortunately had to be cut from the script afterwards. This is explained by the fact that Johnson was unable to make it to the shoot on time due to unfavorable circumstances over the past two years, opting instead to stay with his family. However, he emphasized in the interview that he still has hopes of perhaps making it into the film through post-production. So far, unfortunately, it doesn't look like he will. Fans of the 90s series can rejoice. Not only will chaos theorist Dr. Ian Malcolm, who already had a small role in The Fallen Kingdom, be featured again, also starring this time our former protagonist Dr. Alan Grant and Dr. Ali Sadler. For both, it's the first appearance since Jurassic Park 3 from 2001. The recognized paleontologist and the paleobotanist will surely be in great demand now that the dinos are expanding across the United States. In an interview, director Colin Trevorrow also expressed that that the roles of the three veteran stars should not be underestimated, especially when it comes to creating a connection between the parts. Thus, fans can look forward to the trio being given quite a bit of screen time. Ian Malcolm will of course be played by Jeff Goldblum again, just as Sam Neill and Laura Dern will be cast as the two natural scientists. In addition to the three main actors from the first trilogy, B.D. Wong is also part of the cast as the genetic engineer Dr. Henry Wu. 
Just like Gollum, he could already be seen on the big screen in other parts of Jurassic World. Also, for the first time since the first part, Lewis Dodgson will be playing a role in the movie. But uh, wait a minute, who's this supposed to be, you ask? Well, rightly so, as he will probably be remembered by very few people. It was him who handed Dennis Nedry the shaving cream can with which he was supposed to steal the dinosaur embryos from Illanubla in the first minutes of Jurassic Park. We can only speculate how the character will translate into the new movie, given that he didn't make any further appearances apart from this scene. He is the only one who was recast as well. This time, Dodgson gets played by Campbell Scott instead of Cameron Thorez in 1993. Indeed, in 2016, the latter was sentenced to six years in prison for sexually molesting minors. The Star Ensemble will be expanded further with the addition of Dewanda Wise and Mama Duathi. So far, nothing is known about their role, sadly, and the revival of the All Stars also leaves the question unanswered as to how big the roles are going to be. Beforehand, however, there was talk of a leading role. Whether they are dinosaur friends or foes remains to be seen. In any case, we're intrigued and look forward to the two newcomers. The cast also includes Deach and Luckman and Scott Hayes, but they will likely be given smaller roles. Hayes has starred in Venom and Zero Villain in recent years, whereas Lackman is mostly known from her acting in series. Probably the biggest change in the team is the director's choice, with Colin Trevorrow returning to the set. He directed the first part, but gave up his position for the benefit of the Spaniard J.A. Bayona for The Fallen Kingdom. Nevertheless, he was never entirely gone from the franchise as he contributed further as a producer and screenwriter. Responsible for the screenplay this time are Emily Carmichael and Derek Connolly. Carmichael's work is well known for him Pacific Rim Uprising, while Derek Connolly has already worked on the first two scripts. The movie has a budget of 165 million US dollars, that's 5 million less than part two. Shooting began in February 2020 and had to be discontinued after not even a month due to the ongoing pandemic. Luckily, they were able to finish at the end of November, though this was only accomplished under the strictest conditions with around 40,000 rapid tests and additional costs of 9 million US dollars. As a result of the longer shooting period, the film's release has been postponed and is now scheduled for release on June 10th, 2022, almost four years after the second part. There are several images from the set and also a five-minute preview which was shown exclusively before Fast and Furious 9 in IMAX theaters. This allowed us to see a list of the dinos which are new or to be seen again. It was clear from the very first five minutes that the creators will refrain from using new genetically modified dinos in the third part in favor of going back to the paleontological approach. Well, we don't have to go into detail regarding old favorites like the T-Rex and the Velociraptors. Rather, let's talk about the Dreadnoughtus, which is very similar to the Brachiosaurus. Fossils of the herbivore were actually discovered in 2005. Other herbivores are the Nasutoceratops and the Uguanodon. Keslacoatlus will also be featured as a new race as Pterosaurus. Whereas the previously seen winged reptiles were only seen slightly larger than humans, the Keslacoatlus reaches the size of a giraffe. As the latest discovered dinosaur, we will have to deal with Moros Intrepidus. This one could already be marveled at in the five-minute preview in the IMAX theaters. Even the small detail with the feathers is intentionally presented. After all, some scientific studies showed that dinosaurs had at least in parts feathers. The leading paleontologists are not yet in complete agreement about the feathering. Nevertheless, it's still great to see that scientific findings are dealt with in the film. Needless to say, this time the movie must also feature dinosaur which is of particular worry to the heroes and now the whole of humanity. This time around, it will most likely be the Giganotosaurus. This is considered to be the largest is known carnivore that has ever existed on land and was native to Argentina. Moreover, some pictures surfaced on Twitter which showed another carnivore, namely the Pyroraptor. Historically, the lizard-hip dinosaur lived in what is now Provence, France. What is clear is that the action will take place around four years after the dinosaurs broke out into the wild and the images also reveal that the dinos have reclaimed many parts of nature. However, it is not supposed to be a mere fighting spectacle between humans and dinosaurs as fans can expect more of a science thriller instead. This is certainly one reason why the stars of the 90s have been brought back and will play a bigger role. According to the director, the main focus will be on ethical and scientific matters and to what extent they are compatible with one another. Jeff Goldblum recently even hinted that the impact of the ongoing pandemic is going to play part in the film as well. We are looking forward to the last installment of the series as we are 
are sure that it will perfectly balance the scientific aspect of the 90s with the action of the new movies. We cannot predict when the first trailer will be available, but we are sure it will not take much longer. As usual, you'll be able to watch it on our channel as soon as it is out. Now you should be well prepared for the new movie. Which dinosaur are you looking forward to the most? Let us know in the comments below. We are eagerly awaiting the first trailer. In case there are any further news about the film, you will of course find them here in our weekly news. See you next time.